with enough parts to get going again the work resumed on the Enfield bullet engine as you can see this part of the crankcase had been worn away the way I repair this is to insert a stainless steel rod into the missing parts and build up with aluminium welding the stainless acts as a back support to the welding making it easier to keep everything in alignment and less machining at the end of it I try to concentrate the arc on the aluminium rather than on the stainless more or less letting the molten aluminium roll over the stainless mandrel keeping everything clean especially with these cases as they seem to be absolutely soaked with oil it's a good idea to move the stainless rod every now and then just to make sure it isn't sticking because as the aluminium cools it tends to contract onto the rod but eventually build up enough for it to be cleaned back and as you can see here just tap the rod out although it got stuck and I had to use a drift to finish it the last bit with the rod removed I could use a die grinder to just roughly shape everything ready to be finished later it's a good idea to go a bit strong with the welding so it can be polished back it's easier to take metal off than to put it on Here I'm just blending it in, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's at the lower end of the crankcase and out of sight. For the face that the nut tightens against I use the counter bore to clean off and give a level surface parallel to the crankcase joint. there's still left a bit of excess to be cleaned off a simple case of gently filing down to the flat surface created by the counter bore Then a final polish with the Dremel sanding drum. The crankshaft keyway also needed some attention. This was built up with weld using a very fine point on a very small electrode in the TIG very carefully building up the sides of the keyway but still leaving a little gap that I can use for reference later luckily the rotor isn't used for timing of the engine there are no timing marks on the rotor so complete accuracy isn't necessary just has to be as good as I can get it the crank was then put in the lathe to remove the excess 
I was pretty surprised at how rough the crank has been made. I know that the Indian Enfields have a reputation of not the finest machining, but this was borderline. It took a couple of goes to find somewhere that would actually let me turn the piece that I wanted to parallel to the original. This first cut was a light cut just to see if I was anywhere close even though I dialed it in on the main part of the shaft to me it looked as if there was a little bit of a wobble on the part I was machining. So I brought in the dial gauge again and set it on the shaft on an area behind where I was working on the section of shaft I was trying to return to its original size. Luckily this seems to have worked as when I cut the final cut it turned out just exactly as I wanted it. I actually took off cuts of half a thou it for fear of actually marking the original dimensions. A quick check for fit and thankfully everything seems okay. That's everything ready to cut the new woodruff slot and insert the new key. Thanks for watching.